In today's video we're going to be using Visual Basic to create ourselves this temperature converter and basically it takes a Fahrenheit number and converts it into degrees Celsius and we change the Fahrenheit by just grabbing this scroll bar here and scrolling it around left and right okay so you get the idea of how it's going to work pretty simple we can also use the arrows at the end of the horizontal scroll bar there if you'd like and we just quick exit to end the program so to get started today, head up to the file menu, make yourself a new project like usual. Choose Visual Basic from the left and the Windows Forms app in the center column there. And give it a name, like Temp Converter. That'll do. And browse for a spot to save it. I'm just going to save on my desktop, but you should be saving somewhere in your documents. And click OK when you're ready to go. Once you get your empty form up on the screen, just make it a little bit bigger than what it is. And we're going to start by bringing out a label. On that label, we'll give it the text temperature converter. And you probably want to change the size of it a bit. So change the font to bold, make it a bit bigger. Doesn't matter how big. Um, we'll probably do. And just remember to give that label a name. So. LBL header will be fine. Well, I remember, let's click on the form and change its design name here. So change the name to FRM Temp Converter. And you might want to change the text as well. So instead of saying Form 1 up the top left there, let's change the text to say Temperature Converter. And that way the writing up the top left will change. It'll look a little bit more appropriate. Uh, next thing we're going to bring out is a couple of text boxes. Let's bring out one to start with actually. And what I'm going to do is change the font size. Size 12. Click OK. And also in that text box I'm going to scroll down and look for the read only option and set to true. That way we can read what's in the text box but we can't write inside of it. Okay. Um, the other thing we might do is when you change it to read only, it kind of goes a grey colour and matches the background. So let's just change the back colour of that text box to white. Okay, that way it still looks like a text box. Um, the name you want for that text box, where are we? Uh, coming down, there it is, the name there. We want to call that one TXT Fahrenheit. And we can copy this now. So Control C to copy, Control V to paste. And we get a second text box. The same settings, we'll just change the name though to TXT Celsius. Alright, so I think they're looking pretty good now for the text boxes. So we'll grab a couple of labels again now. And just drag in one underneath that text box. The name of this label will be LBL. Fahrenheit and we might change the size of that font as well just bump it up to size 12 like the text box okay the text that this one is going to say is simply Fahrenheit I think I might have spelled that wrong just a moment ago when I named that let me just have a quick look I did what the H out it's F-A-H-R-E-N height yeah, there we go Alright, and so Fahrenheit just sits underneath that text box because it's going to tell us that this is the text box that has the Fahrenheit temperature in it. If you copy this Fahrenheit label and paste it in again, just move it over to the right there, and we need to change its name to LBL Celsius, and its text needs to be changed from Fahrenheit to Celsius. Okay, and just stick that under that right hand text box somewhere. Next thing we're bringing in is a horizontal scroll bar. So it's called a H scroll bar in your toolbox. Just drag that out. And you want to make it a bit bigger as well. So it should take up almost the width of your app. Okay, you might want to move things around and get them looking a little bit neater, but that's looking pretty good. And the final thing, we actually we'll give it a name first. So while you clicked on the horizontal scroll bar, let's give it a name. We call it HSB, that's the shortened version for horizontal scroll bar, and we'll just call it scroller. That'll 
do there. Um, there's something else we need to change in here. It's the maximum and minimum values here. Okay, we don't want this scroll bar to go on for days, so we'll set the maximum value to 300, and we'll set the minimum value to, say, minus 100. Press Enter. Make sure you've got those two max and min values set. And finally now we'll bring in a button that just closes our program off. So I'll change the font on this button and make that size 10. The text is going to say exit. And scrolling down the name will be BTN exit. Okay, you can just resize that button however you see appropriate. Okay, once you've got it into position you might as well resize your app and get it all looking good. That's not too bad now. Okay. Uh, we might as well do the easy coding first of all. So the exit button. Just double click on that and write in the word end. And that word end will simply end our program when we click on the exit button. Alright, so back to our form now. That's the exit button all sorted. Now the rest of the code is going to go onto our horizontal scroll bar. So basically when we scroll up left and right, the values in these boxes are going to change. So let's set some values in these boxes first of all. For Fahrenheit, the text, I'm going to write 32.0. And for the Celsius, we're going to set 0. And I might change the text alignment below it there to center. So we've got these values centered. Oops, I've chosen right. I need to get them in the center. There we go. So that looks like a good starting place. I've just realised I've spelled Celsius wrong there, so I better fix that up. Celsius. Celsius. There we go. Not a very good speller. All right. So double click on your horizontal scroll bar. Okay. And now we've got an event that's been created when we scroll our horizontal scroll bar. That means when we move it left and right, what do we want it to do? Well, the first thing we need to do is declare a couple of variables. So we're going to dim the temp variable, and that's going to be an integer. And we're also going to declare Celsius as a single, which means we can have a, a single decimal point in our temperature. All right. So that's looking good. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to write temp. We're going to write the value of what the temp is. So the temp variable will equal horizontal scroll bar dot value. Okay, so wherever we scroll our scroll bar, that value will be set to the temp variable. Okay, and then in our Fahrenheit box, so if we go back here, this box here, we're going to write txt Fahrenheit dot text equals temp. Alright, so let's just run that and see if that actually does anything yet. So when we scroll this scroll bar, you can see now our Fahrenheit changing to whatever our scroll bar is set to. Okay, so this isn't changing yet because we haven't calculated that yet, but at least we've got our Fahrenheit temperature working nicely. And when we, when we press the exit button, it should end. Okay, so I might put in a little comment here. So you put in a little quotation mark and just say set the value of the Fahrenheit text box to the variable temp. Actually, set the value of the Fahrenheit text box to the scroll bar value will make more sense scroll bar value there we go so let's move down onto the next line we need to work out the celsius um, amount now so let's write celsius so that's this variable up here we need to write what that actually equals so it's going to equal and the conversion from fahrenheit to celsius is temp so the value of fahrenheit take away 32 and then outside of those brackets, we divide it by 9 times 5. Okay, and now that we've got that value in text Celsius dot text, we're going to put that value as Celsius. Okay, so 
set the value of the Celsius text box is the answer from the equation above. Okay, so the answer from this equation that converts Fahrenheit to Celsius, we're just going to put that answer in our text Celsius box. Alright, so let's give that a test run and see how it looks. So as we move this now, you can see we get our temperature. The issue is all those decimal places. Okay, that's causing quite a bit of an issue. So let's fix that up. We'll format these text boxes so they're a little bit neater. Okay, so in the Celsius box here, just before the word Celsius, we're going to write the word format because we're going to change the format of how it's displayed. And in brackets, we write Celsius and then put a comma and tell it how we want it displayed. So we're just going to put in um, quotation marks and we'll just write in hashtag, hashtag 0, 0.0. Okay, and then we'll close those quotation marks and we'll close the bracket off. So we've just updated Celsius to say format because we want to change the look of how Celsius is displayed and this is the look it's going to be displayed in. It's basically going to have a decimal point by the main number and then one decimal place after it. Okay. If our temperature goes into uh, double or triple figures then we've got the hashtags there to cater for that. Okay, So let's test that out and see how it looks. Now when we move it you can see we've just got one decimal place after the Celsius there. It's a lot neater. Might be a good idea to do that for Fahrenheit as well. Okay, so back up here where we've got the text Fahrenheit.txt box. Just before the word temp, let's write format. Open up our bracket. We leave the word temp there. Just stick a comma in after it and format it the same way. So in quotation marks, hashtag, hashtag, 0, 0.0. Close the quotation marks and close the brackets. So I've just added that little section in to format how the Fahrenheit temperature text box will look. Alright, so let's run that. And now you can see we've got one decimal place in our Fahrenheit as well. Alright, so now that's converting Fahrenheit to Celsius. Looking good. So I'll press exit there. I might just put in one more comment here next to this calculation. It was bothering me that I didn't do that before. So convert the Fahrenheit amount to Celsius. Alright, and if you want to put another comment up the top here, just say close the program. Alright, in your assignments remember it's a really good idea to include comments. It just tells people when they're going over your code what the code actually does in plain simple English. Remembering that the computer when it runs the code it just ignores anything in the green. So any of these comments will just be ignored. Alright, so you can save that up and that is how you create the temperature converter.